Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Berter. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate these mysteries of God's love for us, we call to mind our sin and ask for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us now give glory to God. Glory Glory to to God God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant we may serve you with all our hearts. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days the Lord said to Moses, Go down. For your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly, out of the way which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf, and have worshipped it and, worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people. And behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. But of you I will make a great nation. But Moses begged the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel your servants, 
to whom you swore by your own self, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven, and all this land I have promised. I will give you descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. I will arise and go to my father. Create a pure heart for me, O God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I will arise and go to my Father. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. My sacrifice to God, a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart, O God, you will not spurn. I will arise and go to my Father. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Brothers and sisters, I thank him who has given me strength for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful by appointing me to his service, though I formerly blasphemed and persecuted and insulted him. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I am the foremost of sinners. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. When he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents and over 99 righteous people who do not need repentance. Or, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, 
she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's readings invite us to reflect on the mercy of God. In the first reading, we hear about how Moses interceded with God on behalf of the Israelites when God intended to destroy them because of their infidelity to him. They had become impatient with God during their long journey through the desert and in their stiff nakedness had decided to take matters into their own hands. They had built an idol for themselves and worshipped it. God was hurt by this infidelity. Sometimes in life, we have to confront our own stiff nakedness. We know that we all have our own weaknesses, insecurities, and bad habits. They can prevent us from serving God in freedom, and sometimes they can really hurt those around us. To become aware of these weaknesses can be difficult. We can feel as though God ought to rain down fire upon us for all of our attachments and the hurt we cause. Perhaps Moses felt this hopelessness when he reflected upon the infidelity of his people. But how shall we respond to this painful awakening to our own stiff nakedness? Let us follow the example of Moses who begs God to have mercy on the Israelites. He becomes aware of God's full-heartedness. God responds to Moses' pleas with mercy and compassion for his people. Let us pray for ourselves and for others that no matter how stiff-necked we can be, God's full-heartedness can always prevail. But mercy is not always popular. In the gospel, we hear how sinners and tax collectors gather around Jesus. The Pharisees grumble and complain about his comfort and closeness with them, that he eats and drinks with them. Jesus is clearly very attractive to the outcasts of his society. We can ask ourselves why that is. What is it about Jesus that is so attractive, especially to those people who we find most repulsive. Maybe we should take a moment to ask ourselves, who are the people that I find most repulsive? And how does Jesus look at these people? Can we imagine Jesus' dinner table surrounded by all those people who we like least, by those people we think least deserving of his love and attention? What is this meal like? What conversations are happening? Can you see Jesus' loving glance at each of them? Can you hear his laughter? How do you feel imagining this scene? Jesus responds to the grumbling Pharisees with beautiful parables that demonstrate God's mercy, those of the lost sheep and the lost coin. The same chapter of Luke's Gospel and the longer version of today's Gospel also include the parable of the prodigal son. It is probably easier to let lost sheep remain lost. It's easier just to forget about that lost coin. Sin is a rupturing of our relationships with others and with God. It is the souring of love. It is when bitterness and hurt get in the way of understanding and love and get in the way of us making room for others in our hearts. Reconciliation takes work. We have to climb mountains, scale rocks, lower ourselves into uncomfortable crevices and search for the restoration of that relationship. Sometimes we really have to sweep up the whole house 
in search of healing. I remember not too long ago when a friend of mine and, mys and myself were having some difficulties in our relationship. Some things had been said and done by both of us that were deeply hurtful to the other. To heal that relationship took time. We had to sit down and talk it out. Each of us had to express how we felt. We had to sweep up all the dirt. We had to get into all the little dark corners of our relationship. It wasn't easy. It was painful. But through this, we were able to find some forgiveness and healing. The lost coin was found. And just like in the Gospels, there was great rejoicing in each of us that we'd been able to find that reconciliation, that our relationship had been restored. I think it can be the same with God. Sometimes life gets messy and we feel abandoned by God. Many of us have felt this way during the pandemic, and I think many of us feel this way now every time we open the news. Sometimes it's us who mess up and we feel like we have abandoned God. Sometimes our relationship with God can feel like it is in tatters. Restoring that relationship also takes time, work, and effort. We have to sweep up everything in our hearts and give it all to God. We have to have those painful conversations. We need to have those heart-to-heart -heart moments with God. We need to journey in search of that lost harmony. But just like with my friend, and just like we read in today's gospel, when we find that reconciliation, when we find that harmony with God once again, there is great rejoicing in us and also with God. God rejoices at the restoration of our relationship with Him. And as we make this journey, we realize something very important, that God has made the first move. God passionately desires a relationship with us. His heart is full of us. He loves us with his whole being. He is searching the mountainsides for us. He is sweeping up the house, looking for us. When we ask God for mercy, we do so with the confidence that God already desires to grant it to us and most certainly will do so. In fact, our job is really to accept and welcome God's mercy and God's love into our lives. He is always standing near to offer it. Let us pray today for the grace of having a keener awareness of God's full-heartedness for us and for others. And let us pray for the grace of welcoming that love into our hearts. So, brothers and sisters, we now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now with faith in the love of our Father for us, we bring him our prayers. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your amazing love and your mercy. We ask you for the grace that we might be aware of your forgiving heart so that we might always turn to you in difficult moments, and that we may always trust in, that you welcome us into your heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those with whom we struggle to get along. 
it's not always easy to love some of the people in our lives. We ask for the grace of understanding and compassion so that we, like Christ, may be able to live peacefully and joyfully with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our various countries around the world, especially those that are struggling with political, economic, or social problems. May the Lord guide the hearts of leaders and communities so that they may build a world that more closely reflects your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church, which is currently convoked in the synod on synodality. May we become a community that is welcoming, able to listen, participative, and eager to serve Christ's mission of mercy and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those that are sick. May they be aware of God's love for them, even during difficult moments. Please help those entrusted with their care to make wise and caring decisions and grant their loved ones all the support and care that they need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, hear our prayers today, those we've spoken out loud, but also those that we pray in the silence of our hearts. For we ask them all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, that to become for us the bread of life. This is God forever. By the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humble himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased with his gifts for your fear of humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for all God's holy church. Look with favour on our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and reveal the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we bring by sending down your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body 
and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope, with Butit Lachale, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, our husband, with the apostles and the martyrs, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to share eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, for it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. And now let us share with one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my youth, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace, giving God glory with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.